Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me for this NC Bold session. Hopefully you can all hear me and see my screen. Um, again, if you will throw a hand up for me, you should have a little sort of emoji icon that you can do that. Um, or if you wanna throw me a shout out in the Q&A, just to be sure everything is working. Awesome. So this is an introductory level session to Canvas. Um, and I really just wanted to sort of focus on assignments. Um, you know, re really focus on how this can be useful to you directly right now. Um, so our objectives today, I'm going to run through the different assignment and submission types in Canvas. There are a few different ways you can use that. Uh, we will create a self-grading quiz in Canvas with the new Quizzes 2 feature. Um, so if you are a more seasoned Canvas user, we will be looking at the new quizzes versus the old quizzes. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about dealing with publishing and due dates and students being able to see um, your assignments. Um, and then finally, we'll wrap up with Q&A, just anything I haven't covered or anything that comes up along the way, I'll save some time at the end for that. Um, if you do have any questions along the way, please feel free to drop it into the Q&A section. And a little bit about me, I am from NCGPI. I'm on the home-based professional learning team. Um, so the short of all those words there is that I train on anything home base for DPI. I just started this position back in February and I've really enjoyed being able to help teachers everywhere instead of just at my one charter school that I worked at before. So without further ado, we will jump into the various assignment and submission types. Um, and I will mention too, I do have some links throughout the slide deck. Um, and the bit.ly was shared back at the beginning. So please let me know if you missed that, but there are a lot of great resources out there. So in Canvas, an assignment is anything that is gonna be handed in or graded in some way. In order to get something to show up in the Canvas gradebook, it has to be an assignment. The only sort of exception to that is a discussion board, which is set up sort of outside assignments as a discussion board. Um, and that's kind of outside our scope today. Um, so the main submission types for an assignment, you can have an assignment with no submission. So this will just add an extra column in your Canvas gradebook. This might be useful if you are taking some sort of just quick check like, did you sign in today? Did you participate? Did you turn this in? <laughs> okay, so Friday, let's do the quiz. You think it looked okay? Oh, and I see we do have a question about no sound. Um, so if you are having any sound issues, we do advise that you try calling in. WebEx sometimes works works better on the phone than it'll work on the computer for some reason. Okay. Yeah. All right, so no submission is just adding a column to your grade book. You can input a grade, but the students will not actually hand anything in. An online submission is anything where students are going to turn in their work online through Canvas itself. So maybe you want them to just type in a quick response um, without real detailed formatting. Maybe you want them to upload a file. Maybe you want them to record, um, you know, themselves speaking or even a video of themselves speaking or something like that. Um, or even just a link. Maybe they need to send you a link to something. Um, the next one down is on paper. And so in Canvas, this is very similar to no submission, but this would be used if you have something that you want them to turn in on paper, but you want to present the assignment through Canvas. 
Um, and then finally, external tool. Um, and this one is very cool. So this one will allow students to use an external tool to complete the assignment. And it sort of will wrap a lot of these tools within Canvas so the students can do everything in Canvas while still getting the functionality of the external tool. Um, and some examples of that are Canvas Quizzes 2, actually the new quizzes is considered an external tool. Um, you can also embed Google Drive or Office 365 documents. Um, and so when you do that, it will make a copy for each student of that document and then the student can hand in their modified copy directly in Canvas. Um, and you can even do Quizlet and a whole bunch of other things. Um, Canvas really does play nice with a lot of different systems out there. So I don't see any questions so far on that. Um, so again, if there are any questions as I go along, please feel free to throw a question into the Q&A panel. And if we don't have anything, I actually want to jump in to a live demo. So the way I always like to show Canvas is to actually make some sort of assignment. So when you log into Canvas, you're going to come to this sort of dashboard page and you should have all of your current courses listed here. And for me today, I have the sandbox course that I use just to kind of play with stuff. Um, and I also went and I pulled from Go Open NC this simple little PDF math worksheet. I, I think this is a fourth or fifth grade adding some traffic decimals worksheet. And so we're going to look at a couple different ways that we could turn this worksheet into some sort of online assignment. And so probably the most basic way we'll start with is we can just take this PDF that we might have printed out in the past and handed out and we can upload this to Canvas and make it an assignment that students can fill out online. So when we're in our Canvas course, we'll jump straight into assignments. Um, and this is where we will spend the bulk of our time today. Um, there are other NC Bold sessions that kind of go over some of these other things. Um, and there are webinars and many resources I'll also point out this help icon in Canvas, and the Canvas guides here are very helpful. They are full, complete user guides for literally every single button in Canvas. So if you ever can't figure something out in Canvas, that is a great place to go for help. So on your assignments page, you can, I'll also point out, group your assignments if that's something that you want to do. Maybe you want to keep all your quizzes together in one box and all of your other things together somewhere else. But we're going to go ahead and add an assignment here. And so coming up to the assignment page, it's a pretty simple setup. So we're just going to give it a title, add in decimals. And we're going to keep this set up simple. So this is our area here to set up our assignment, share instructions, all of that kind of thing. And so in this case, our instructions are just going to be to download the linked PDF. So this is going to be our sort of simplest option for turning in a PDF. And what we need to do now is add a link to our PDF. I'm sorry, actually we want to upload a document to our assignment. So we're going to hit this documents button right here. You do have this rich text editor bar here, um, which lets you do all sorts of HTML formatting, highlighting, superscript, subscript. You can even have a little equation editor here if you're a math teacher and you want to have equations that look correct. And I'll mention the same bar is available throughout many places in Canvas. So we'll go ahead and hit this document icon and we will upload a document. 
I'm going to grab my decimals PDF and throw it up here. So we've got that filled in, and again, we could get really fancy with this. We can even insert videos and images and different things. Um, you can really go all out here and make this a very cool experience for your students. You'll give it a points value. And then if you were using assignment groups, this is where you would do that. Um, assignment groups are really, in my opinion, more for you to organize. There are other ways I would suggest organizing them for students. You're going to tell it how you want this grade to display, if you wanted to just give them points or a percentage or a turned in, not turned in. All of these options are available. And you can even exclude it from the final grade. Now, I should mention this setting does not necessarily apply if you are going to push this grade into your Power Teacher Pro gradebook. Um, you can have those grades push. And next down, this is where we get into our submission type. So in this case, this is an online submission because we want the students to upload something back into Canvas. So in this case, it's going to be a file upload that we'll check. You could also do a text entry, which would just give them a text entry box that looks actually very similar to this one. Um, you can also have them submit a URL or record some media. But in this case, we just want file uploads. And if we wanted to, we could even restrict what kinds of files we want them to upload. Um, so I might say they can only upload a PDF. Now, I will point out, you'll want to be careful with this, especially with remote learning. Um, and if your students are using their own devices and they might be using different apps than maybe you have, you might not want to restrict it too much unless you're just definitely getting bad stuff back in. And next down here, we have the number of attempts. So how many times can a student submit this assignment by default? Um, so do you want them to be able to submit it unlimited times, or do they only get a certain number of attempts? I might set it as one. I only want them to turn it in one time, and maybe we'll take care of corrections in another way later. Um, I'll also point out you can do group assignments. Um, and you can have it automatically split students into groups, or you can let them pick their own groups. And you can also do peer reviews. Um, so maybe if you're setting up an assignment where they are turning in a uh, essay draft or something like that, you could have them do peer reviews through Canvas as well. Um, and I'm going to skip over this assign box for now. Um, just because I have a segment a little bit later where we're going to go into detail on kind of thinking through the different options with this. But in brief, you can assign it to everyone in this class. You can pick specific kids, or if you have specific sections or groups set up, and that's where you would do that. And you can even differentiate for different groups with this Add button. So I'm just going to go ahead and save this assignment. And now this is more or less what students would see. They would click this link to download the PDF. And then they could annotate that with the application of their choice, and they would submit it back here. And just for fun, let's also go ahead and look at a few other submission types while we're here. Oh, and I see we do have a question that just came in on the assignment points. Um, so if you enter assignments as points in Canvas, do your categories in Power Teacher Pro need to be set to points also, or can the categories be on percentages? So your categories in Power Teacher Pro can be left on percentages. What Canvas is going to push to Power Teacher Pro is essentially just assignment name, points possible, points earned, and then Power Teacher Pro is going to take care of calculating the percentage and the class averages and everything according to the way you have it set up on that side. 
Um, so when you're pushing these assignment grades to Power Teacher Pro, Canvas just sort of ships the data over and lets Power Teacher handle all of the calculations and displays and grade scales and all, all that kind of stuff. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Looks like I said, okay, the instructional guidance, instructional guidance is Jennifer Hamrick and Stacey Huffman. I don't know if that was for me, so I'll, I'll remute everyone, but let me know if that was for me in the QA panel and I'll get to it. Anyway, so let's throw in a quick participation grade. Um, you know, this might be, hey, did the student participate in a class discussion or something like that? Might be something like that. And maybe this is just a one point assignment. It's going to be no submission type. And you'll see our options get a little more simple now. We do have the same assign options and group assignment peer review options. Um, they wouldn't be terribly applicable in this case, but. So in this case, the student doesn't actually have to do anything. And again, this is essentially what the student will see. But if we flip into our Canvas gradebook, you'll see that we do have this column for participation, this assignment we just made, and we can put in a grade for it if we want. And then while we're here also, um, I was going to kind of save this for an if we have time thing, but it's cool enough that I think I should run through it real fast while we're still in this section. So, We've, up, we've made this assignment for our adding and subtracting decimals worksheet, but the student has to download a PDF and then use a different program to add their answers to it and then upload it back to Canvas. And that's not terribly difficult, but it's also a little clunky. There are some extra steps there that we, we don't really necessarily need to take. Um, but, and in this example case, our district has Google Docs available to us. Um, and you could also do this if your district is an Office 365 district. But what I've done is I actually have a Google Docs version of this same exact worksheet. And so instead of making the kids download a file and edit a file and re-upload a file, we can actually have Canvas just present this Google Doc to the students. They can type their answers right in here and then they can just click submit and this doc will come to me as the teacher to grade. And I, I am still astounded at how easy this is. Um, so this is sort of a, you know, maybe your next step after you're comfortable uploading PDFs here. So we'll make another new assignment and give it a title. And so in this case, our instructions are going to be similar, except students are going to see the assignment title and these instructions, this description, just like before. But then below that, embedded right into the page, is going to be our Google Doc. And what it's going to do as soon as the student hits that page is it will automatically copy that Google Doc into their drive so they can access it later. And it's going to let them edit it right there on that same screen within Canvas. So our instructions might be something along the lines of insert your answers into the Google Doc shown below. And just like before, we're going to give it a points value and set up our assignment groups if we want and our grade options if we want. And I should mention in your real Canvas instances, I think the checkbox is right here, um, right below this one that says sync to PTP. And that is the box that you would check if you want this assignment grade to sync to Power Teacher Pro. 
Um, and I should mention, if you are using categories in your Power Teacher Pro gradebook, there are some certain steps you need to make sure to take um, if you want those categories to sync properly between the two as well. Um, essentially, you have to make your categories in Power Teacher Pro and let those push to Canvas. You can't create them in Canvas, otherwise you get conflicts. Anyway, and in this case, our submission type now is going to be external tool. And so this looks a little weird, like, okay, what is our external tool URL? What is this? So you can actually just hit find. And this is going to pop up this little box, and you can make it bigger here so you can see better. Um, but this is going to let you pick an external tool that's already set up. And I should mention if you, I'll scroll through here briefly. If your actual Canvas instance is missing one of these and you would like to use it, you will want to talk to your Canvas admin in your school or district. Um, these do need to be installed by your Canvas admin if they are not listed. So in our case, we're going to do a Google Docs cloud assignment. Again, you could also do an Office 365 cloud assignment, and it works pretty much the same way. And when we click on Google Docs Cloud Assignment, it's going to pop up this little link resource from external tool. Now, I've already linked my Google account to Canvas. Um, if you hadn't already linked your account, it would pop up here and ask you to log in to your Google account. And I'm just going to find through here and find my adding and subtracting decimals document. And we'll select that. And we'll hit select again. And now we have our... Google Drive document linked in here as an external tool. And again, we have the same submission attempt options and assignment options. So we're going to go ahead and save that as well. And so again, this is basically what the students will see, more or less. Um, so in Canvas is giving us this message here, students will receive a copy of this document that they can modify. And the students are going to see their copy right down here embedded, just like I do. So the students will be able to go in here, they can type their answers in, and then they'll have a submit button down here at the bottom. So they just edit this and hit submit, and they are good to go. And we'll get that back in our grades area for us to grade later on. So I believe that that is everything I wanted to cover in that section. Are there any questions so far on what we've covered? And I actually have this neat little little activity we can try. I've never tried it with a with a group before, but if you want to give it a shot, you can either text to that number or you can respond at that website um, and just kind of let me know how we're doing so far. I'll give everyone just a few minutes there. Hopefully it'll work. So I'm going to go ahead and move ahead. We've only got three in, but I don't see any questions that have popped up. So next up, I, I really wanted to spend the bulk of our time today looking at creating a quiz. Um, you know, these Various assignment types we've looked at so far are great and very cool and can make life easier, but you still have to grade every single thing by hand, right? We want to automate that if we can. So, new this year is Quizzes 2 in Canvas. So Canvas always had a Quizzes feature, but Quizzes 2 is a redesigned quiz creation function. Um, but it's very cool. Many different question types are available. There's matching and categorization and hotspots. And if you're a math teacher, there's even like formulas where you can have it calculate, you know, all the different possible answers to a formula question. Of course, the good old multiple choice, multiple answers, um, numerics, orderings, all sorts of different cool stuff. Um, and I actually listed them all out. You should be able to see the speaker notes of this slide deck if you accessed my bit.ly earlier. 
and I listed out all of the question types, and they are also linked to their respective articles on the Canvas guide. So if you are in later and you're trying to make a quiz and you don't remember what I said about an answer choice or you're trying to use one that I'm not going to cover today, you've got a link right there that will go through every single setting and option for that question type. Um, you can also add stimulus materials next to questions. Um, and so this might be, I'm thinking, especially useful in an ELA class. Maybe you've got a passage that you're allowed to use and you've got some questions that you want to tag to it. You can have the passage display on the left while the questions display on the right and the passage stays there as the students scroll through their questions. Um, and of course, just like with any other Canvas assignment, it can sync to your PowerTeacher Pro gradebook. And of course, with a quiz, if it is a question type that can be determined by a computer, it will self-grade. Um, and if you do have mixed question types, um, it will self-grade but skip over like the open responses and you would just grade those questions on your own. So, and I've also got linked here right on the slide is the main how-to document in the Canvas guides for quizzes two, or they call it new quizzes in the guide still, but I think the, the proper name is quizzes two. Um, and I also included links to the quiz reports and the quiz moderation features. Um, there are some cool reports and cool moder moder if I can say the word moderation. Yeah, there are some cool reports and cool moderation features in there. Um, I will say they're not quite as robust as, say, SchoolNet, um, but they, they are still pretty cool and pretty useful, so especially for maybe a smaller, just a quiz, nothing that's a big assessment, it might be easier to use Canvas and be almost as valuable. So, yet again, I am going to jump into creating a quiz as a live demo. Um, hopefully everybody is still with me. So, I'm actually going to use this same worksheet as the basis for a quiz. Um, you know, maybe we just want to turn this worksheet into a self-grading quiz. We don't want to bother with grading these questions because a lot of them are just math. How many more tons of imports than, us, than exports does this port handle? Well, that's just a number. A computer can tell us if the kid put it in the right number. So, we are going to create a new assignment yet again. And you may have noticed this, this keeps popping up. I've been playing with Canvas for a little while now, trying to prep for this, and it has this information it thinks I may have lost accidentally. So that's just a, a nice little Canvas feature extra. It tries to be very, very nice and helpful for you. So yet again, adding and subtracting decimals. And we'll call this the self-grading version. And for our description here, I'm actually going to leave this blank. And we can leave our points value alone. Um, we can leave all of this alone. And we're going to jump straight down to external tool for our submission type. And we will hit find again. And this time, we want quizzes too. And again, we would set up our attempts numbers and our assignments here. Um, and again, I'm covering that in more detail in the next session, or section, not session. We'll go ahead and save this. And what this, this is going to do is drop us into, this is the Quizzes 2 Quiz Builder interface. So we have the title of the quiz up here, which it pulled from our assignment page. And then we've got this spot here to add our instructions. And again, we get the same fancy formatting bar that we saw earlier. We can upload stuff, we can insert links and math formulas, all sorts of fun stuff. But we'll just give it some basic instructions, read each question and do your best, whatever. Those are our instructions, and I'll also point out while we're here, we've got this item banks option. 
Now, if you're familiar with SchoolNet, this is not like a SchoolNet item bank, but you can build item banks yourself or I believe within a school as well. Um, and so this is a spot where you could store, maybe your team is all working on questions that they want to use on quizzes together. So you could have various different banks and reuse questions out of those banks. And you've also got outcomes. So outcomes in Canvas are basically just standards. Um, and if you were to add your outcomes here to a quiz, you could get reports, again, that are very similar to SchoolNet that show you how students performed per outcome. But I'm going to go ahead and jump to this Add button here. So this blue Add button is how we'll add content to our quiz. And when we hit that, it gives us all of our question options, question types, or we can add a stimulus. And we can also jump straight to our item bank with this button if we had items in our bank and we just wanted to pick one of those. So in this case, this assignment is really all based on this table. So every question, you need this table to answer it. So I actually think we would be best off to add this table as a stimulus. Now we could put the table in to the instructions up here. There's this little table option and we can insert a table here and that would be fine. But as our students scroll down this page to get to the next question, they're not going to be able to see the table anymore. So they're going to be scrolling back and forth and back and forth and who wants that, right? So with a stimulus, it's going to keep that table on the left side and while the students can scroll through their questions on the right side. And the nice thing about Canvas is we can really just copy paste. So in our assignment, we had a title for the table. So I'll paste that into the title. Our instructions are optional, but we'll just say use the table to answer the questions to the right. And then down here in content, again, we get the same rich editing bar. You could insert a table, certainly, and do it by hand. But I want to save myself some time today. I'm just going to copy this table from my Google Doc. And I'm going to come over here and paste. And let's go ahead and make all of this text be 12 point, just so it's kind of normal. Ooh, it looks like we missed a few cells here. Can be a little fiddly, so definitely keep that in mind. All right, so we've got our table. And if you wanted to include the source of where you got this table, you could. This is not visible to students, um, but if you wanted it for your own information, you could. And if you wanted to add the stimulus to a bank, you could do that right here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and add the stimulus. And so now we've got the first part of our quiz built. We have our stimulus information, our table from the original assignment. And so now we could hit add down here again, but that's going to add a question below our stimulus. So that would be maybe a question that's not related to the stimulus. And you could even add another stimulus down here. So maybe you're teaching ELA and you've got two passages that you want to use to make a quiz. But we'll go ahead and attach a question to this. And I'm going to start with a nice easy one. The first question on our form is how many more imports than exports does New Orleans handle each year? So I'm just going to copy that question and come over here and we're going to add a numeric question type because the answer is numeric. Now when you add a question, you do have this question title box here and that's a little misleading. So there's the question title, but your actual question is the question stem. So my title might just be Difference New Orleans. And then in our question stem, I'm going to paste and match style so that I don't have to reformat. And that's a Mac thing. I believe Windows will have a similar option. So that's our question. And now we can set up our answer. So does the student have to give an exact response or a response with a certain amount of precision? Do you want it within a range? 
do you want to give them a margin of error? Um, you know, maybe you're allowing a certain amount of rounding to take place, so it could betwe be between this number and that number. In this case, we really want an exact response um, because they're just subtracting these decimals. They should get exactly the right answer. And so I'm going to flip over to my handy dandy answer key here. We know that the answer is 4.65. So we will pop that in there. And we could add another possible answer. Whoops. We could add another possible answer here. If it was a, maybe it's a tricky question. We could give another answer option. Um, under our options here, you can choose to show an on-screen calculator as well. And you can choose between basic or scientific. It is giving us this warning here. Um, and I'm going to jump into the quiz settings here in just a second too um, and talk about that. But if you enable this on-screen calculator the way this is set up, even though it's only turned on for this one question, they're going to be able to see the next question too and go back and use that calculator on the next question. So be careful there. In this case, I don't think we need a calculator for this. We should be able to do this on our own. And we could continue adding more question types in here. Of course, you've got a multiple choice where you're picking one of however many answers or maybe a multiple answer. Maybe you're picking two or three. Out of a handful, there are a lot of different options here. Um, I'll also, I don't know, let's throw in maybe an ordering question, right? So we could have the students order them. So maybe they'll sort each port by the number of imports per year. And we could list out our ports in order. We'll say ones at the top are the most imports, ones at the bottom are the least. And then we would put in our answers in the right order here. We'll just throw in a few just for sake of argument. So on and so forth. You can add more, you can have less. And you get these same on screen calculator options. You also get this display answers in a paragraph option, which would be instead of showing them, you know, a list, it would just be Houston, New York, so on. I don't really like how that looks, but there may be a, a, a use case for that. And so we can keep attaching questions here to the side of the stimulus. We could also add a question below the stimulus or above the stimulus that's not related. So we'll do one more. Let's do a hotspot. Those are kind of fun. And I'll just give it a title of knows maybe. And maybe we've suddenly become a kindergarten teacher. And so we'll upload an image of some sort. Uh, we'll just throw up my mug there. And it's going to upload and process that, hopefully more quickly. And now it's going to have us draw the spot that we want students to click. So we can draw a square, an oval, a crazy polygon, whatever we want. We'll just draw an oval there. And again, we get the on-screen calculator options. You can align to outcomes if you set them up. You can add it to a bank. You get all of these whenever you add a question. So we've gone through adding a couple different question types. And again, linked in the um, slide description are links to every single Canvas or question type. Um, and I see we did get a question. So this quizzes two that we're looking at is a newer feature in Canvas. Um, everyone should have access to it automatically. Um, it's not like an extra purchase or an extra enable or anything like that. Um, but you may still have access to the old quizzes too, um, which nothing wrong with old quizzes. This is just the, the newer version. Um, so if you went to, to quizzes on the left in your, your Canvas class, quizzes is going to take you to old quizzes. To make a new quiz in quizzes two, you have to do an assignment with an external tool. 
And I, honestly, I thought that was a little weird myself when I first saw it, but it's pretty cool. So we've got some questions added in here. Um, and of course, we could go through and make this match this worksheet exactly if we wanted to, right? And we could maybe take some liberties and make some of these questions more interesting. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and jump over to our settings for this quiz. So we get a lot of cool settings. We can shuffle all of our questions. We can shuffle the answer choices. Uh, you know, maybe we've got brothers in our class, and even though they're working from home, we know that the brothers are sitting next to each other, and so maybe we shuffle our questions and our answers just to make sure. We can also have it show one question at a time. So by default, it's going to just show all the questions one after the other on one page. You could instead have it where it shows one question and the student has to click next and you can pick whether or not to allow backtracking. And this you may want to enable, especially if you're giving a math quiz and you want them to use a calculator on some questions, but not others. If all the questions are on one page and the calculator is enabled for one of them, they can use that calculator as long as that page is up. So they could use it on every question. You can require a passcode, you can set time limits, you can filter the IP address if you're doing something crazy. Um, you could allow a calculator on the whole quiz. Maybe you want it to be available on every question. So you could just enable it here instead of on each question. You can turn on multiple attempts here as well, and you can even require a waiting period. So maybe if they don't do so well, you want them to study for two days and take it again. And you can tell it which score to keep and how many times to let them do it again. And you can also restrict the result view. So if you want to restrict that, do you want it to show the points they earned? Do you want it to show how many points were possible? And then do you want to show their responses? Do you want to tell them if they're right or wrong? Do you want to show them the right answer? And do you want to show them any feedback? And also from here, this is where you would access your reports. So you have quiz and item analysis and an outcomes analysis. So the quiz and item analysis is going to kind of give you a question breakdown, you know, how much time did they spend on it, how many got it right, how many got it wrong, that kind of thing. Um, and this document is also linked in my slide deck, um, so you can certainly review that later on. And then you've also got this cool moderation tab, which of course is not going to do anything until you have students actually taking the quiz. Um, but I also linked in there, I thought I still had it pulled up. There should be a link in my slide deck to the article about the moderator dashboard too. So we've gone through that. We can go ahead and preview our quiz right up here now that we've built it. And so it will load everything in. And so this, again, is what a student will see. So they can go in, and we can even take this test as a student. So let's just put in some stuff, and we'll sort these however we might want. And we can click somewhere on here. Is that a nose? And when we hit Submit, and again, this is what a kid would see. Upon submission, you can't change your answers. Are you ready? It's going to auto grade it, and ooh, we didn't do so well, did we? But, and if this were an actual student, this would go straight into your Canvas grade book, which again, you could then go to your Power Teacher Pro grade book. So, and I see we, we do have a repeat of the, the quizzes too. Oh, no, it's not a repeat. Okay, so this is actually a great one, and this one tripped me up too. Are quizzes two and new quizzes the same thing? Yes, they are. Um, and I, I kind of had to find this myself as well. So in Canvas, when you're, you're building this quiz, it's called quizzes two. When you're over here in the Canvas guide looking for help, it's called new quizzes. And so hopefully they're, they're working on updating that, that terminology. But. Oh, interesting. 
So this person says it, it always says new quizzes for her instead of quizzes two. Odd, but it, it is, as far as I can tell, the same thing. So I think I have more or less covered what I wanted to with this. Um, you know, again, you can get very, very detailed here. You can add all sorts of cool question types. Um, and I'll mention too, I know that this feature is called quizzes, but this could be used for a lot of different assignments. You know, you might not in your grade book actually consider this a quiz. Um, you know, maybe this is just a practice activity, but you just don't want to have to grade it yourself because all the answers are numbers, right? There's no reason to grade a practice activity yourself like that. You can just make it a quote unquote quiz and have it graded for you. So once we're done here, you'll notice we're kind of locked out of our normal course navigation on the left. So what you'll do is hit return here at the top right, and that's going to take you back out. And you'll notice it jumped us to the quizzes page and added this on the quizzes page. But if we were to hit add quiz here, it's going to ask you classic or new. And so that's kind of the same thing. I didn't realize that was a question now. So I'm sorry, everyone. I could have showed you this way instead. Always learning new stuff, right? So I believe that was everything I wanted to hit there. And I've got another fun little response thingy before we move ahead to talk about publishing and due dates and availability dates and sort of those fun, crazy administrative things. Um, but if you want to respond on the fancy poll everywhere thingy or throw a hand up or throw me a shout out in the QA or something and let me know we're ready to move ahead. Again, I want to make sure that this session is useful for you. So if there is something I can speak to in more detail, I'm absolutely happy to. So next up is just publishing and due dates. And I, I wanted to make this its own section because depending how strict you want to be with some things, depending on your classroom policies, on your school policies, even on your district policies, you may need to kind of think through how you're going to publish assignments and set up due dates and availability dates and it's just a little tedious, right? So the first thing is in Canvas, you may have noticed when we were going through and working with these assignments, we actually have two save buttons. We have save and we have save and publish. So if you just save, the students aren't going to be able to see it. It doesn't matter what dates you put in there, if at all. If it's not published, the kids can't see it, period. So you can save and come back and work on it later, but if you save and publish, your kids are going to see it. And the next thing you have to think about is availability dates. So on what dates can students actually click into this assignment? So for example, if I were to publish this, but the available from date wasn't until Monday, the student would be able to see that this exists, but they wouldn't be able to access these instructions until the availability date. So when will this be available for students to access? And then finally, the due date, when must the student complete this task for it to be considered timely? So your three asks when you are wrapping up creating your assignment is, can the student see this? So do I want to publish it or not? Second of all, when can the student see this? So if they can see it, when do I want them to start being able to click into it and see it? And then finally, when do I want it to be completed? And I also want to mention again, you can set the availability dates and the due date independently for different class sections or for different groups of students, or even for individual students. Maybe you have one student who has an accommodation that they get an extra day on projects or whatever, right? So you could give that student an independent due date. That student would automatically see their modified due date 
nobody else would know that they have a modified due date except for you. And I mean, even that student might not realize their due date is modified unless they're just paying a lot of attention to their friend's due dates, right? And so with that, we'll, we'll jump in and deal with that real quick. Um, so when we go in and edit an assignment, so we can choose to assign it to everyone. If we have course sections set up, we would see our different course sections here. Or we could even start typing in a student's name here um, if we knew that one particular student needed an extra due date. So I'm just going to say this is due on Friday. I really want them to finish it then. And I don't want them clicking into it before Friday, really, truly. So they should be able to get into it starting Friday morning, early. Let's just, we'll make that 12.01 a.m. for our time on Friday, just to be sure, and it's due on Friday by 11.59 p.m. Now, I am going to make it available until the next Friday. So this way, if a student is absent on the 18th and they, they miss it and they miss the due date, they're still going to be able to see it until the next Friday, until the 25th, and they're even still going to be able to turn it in late until the 25th. On the 25th, this assignment will lock. They'll still be able to see that it exists as long as it's published, but they won't be able to access the instructions. They won't be able to submit it or, or really do anything with it other than see it exists. So now that we've filled that in, I'll go ahead and save and publish. And so now we've got our assignment published, and you can see right next to the edit that it says it's published. If we wanted to unpublish, we could hit unpublish, and that would remove it from student view. So we have one assignment that's published, but it's not available until September 18th. So let's go ahead and add this information to another one, just, just so we have some, some things. So we'll edit our Google assignment here. So I'm going to make it the same due date, but I'm going to make it available from Monday until next Friday. And we're going to save and publish that too. So now we have one assignment that we have two assignments that are published. One is not available until Friday. One is available now. And so another cool thing you can do here, if you go to your course homepage, over here on the right, you have these these sort of extra special options, including like the course status, so is the whole course published or unpublished. So if your kids don't see your Canvas course in their Canvas, double check that. But we can actually go into a student view. And so this is going to load up our course the way a student would see it. And so if I go to assignments, you'll notice I had four when I was in here as a teacher, but only these two have been published. You can see this one tells me it's not available until September 18th, so if I click into it, it's just going to tell me this assignment is locked. I can't see it yet. On the other hand, this Google version that's been available since Monday, I can click into here and I can do this early if I wanted even. So keep that in mind when you are thinking about your availability dates and your due date and all of that kind of thing. Because um, you really might need to think through, okay, well, if a kid is absent and they miss it, do I still need to have that assignment available? Am I going to do something else for them? That kind of thing. So I'm going to go ahead and leave the student view. Um, and I'll mention again, you can um, access any, really any part of your Canvas course from the student view. So if, for example, I wanted to double, double check my new quiz here, we could publish it. And this is another shortcut to publish straight from your assignments page. You've got this checkbox or strike through here. So if I publish my quiz and we go back into student view, and into assignments. Now we have this adding and subtracting decimals, self-grading. You'll note it tells me it's undated. So in this case, it knows they're upcoming because they're due in the future. 
This one, Canvas doesn't know when it's due. We can do it whenever we want. But just like before, you can pull this up, and this is precisely what a student would see. So if they had a time limit, it would show them. If they had a due date, it would show them. It gives them our instructions that we wrote. When they're ready, they can hit begin. And just like when we previewed the quiz before from the teacher view, we can sort things and click our hotspots and submit our quiz. It gives us our same confirmation and it gives us our same auto grade. So, hey, we did a little bit better here. We know what a nose is. And this is actually gonna remember um, this test student. So if I hit return here and come back out, it knows that I completed that assignment. And I can even go into grades and see what the grade book would look like from a student perspective. So I can see my bad score on that test that I just took. And if I wanted to do that again, I can reset the test student down here, or I can just leave student view and jump back into regular life. So and I believe I, I got through that a little bit more quickly than I expected. Um, were there any questions on, on due dates and availability and, and that kind of those sort of administrative functions? So I am more or less near the end of what I had prepared today. Um, so if there are any questions or maybe another Canvas topic I can jump into real quick for you guys. I want to make sure this is valuable for you, but I also don't want to hold you if we've covered it and this has been helpful. Um, so if you want to let me know in the QA or answer a two or three on this poll, either way. And I see we do have a question about using Pear Deck as an external tool assignment. So I have not done that. Um, but I do think it sounds very, very cool, and I would love to play with that one of these days. Oh, and here's a question. Does Canvas always create a submission box when you add an assignment? So not necessarily. Um, if you were to, for example, our participation assignment we made earlier. If we have no submission or external tool, then Canvas itself doesn't necessarily have a submission box set up. Um, some external tools will, right, like the, the Google Drive or the Office 365 integrations we looked at, but others won't. Um, so it, it just kind of depends what kind of submission or assignment it is. Um, hopefully that answered the question there, Lauren.